Hello everyone and welcome back to A Night at Georgie's, my take on Five Nights at Freddy's inside the Unity engine along with the Vive. In the last video we of course wrapped up most of what was necessary to make this scene function, which is the light turning on, flashing in front of our guy over here, putting the moonlight in and having that flash as well to end everything. Now we need to take all this and transition it back into our main scene. So let's make a prefab. Come over here. We have, let's see, over here, lights out head. This already has a prefab, which is just the head. What we're going to want to do is bring the entire scene into this. Now I have, let's see, I have lights out sequence and lights out head, which has the lights out head on that. So let's create a whole new game object, create empty, and call this lights out controller or manager. Yeah, let's do that. And let's take the lights out head, put it under there. Let's grab the lights out sequence, put it under there, and the moonlight as well. Now we have all them wrapped up. Let us also just go ahead and apply all this stuff to those prefabs, and we will make this into a prefab. So grab this, uh, you know what, let's not do that. Let's call this now moonlight instead. There we are, move it down here. Now we have our wonderful prefab of the entire thing. Save the scene, and let's move back to our core scene. Coming to scenes, and let's see. Build test zero two, I guess, is the horrible name of my scene. We have, what do we have? We've got that light source, and it looks like nothing else. I thought I had an ambient light source in here. All right, I don't even have the head in here, so we might as well, just making sure I didn't, what is it called again? Lights out, so let's do a search for lights. Nope, all right, never mind. Get rid of that, and let's grab our lights out sequence, bring it into our scene right there. I'm sorry, wrong one. Let's grab lights out manager and bring that in, and it places it in the right position since we've been working with the same scene. Should also bring that ambient light in, and that'll of course be controlled properly, hopefully. And is that centered? Let's look at this from an orthographic view, or isometric view, and look at it from above. And no, it's not. So let's move that light a bit. Come on, Moonlight, where are you? There we go. We'll put it, yeah, let's say right there. Now we need to make this whole thing work. Save the scene really quick, and we are going to hook this thing up. So actually, I made a few notes here. So we've already done the prefab to the main scene. That's done. Next up, we need the Moonlight script, which is hooked up just fine, so we can get rid of that. Uh, hook up to power outage. All right, so let's go to our power systems and look at those scripts really quick. Let's go, so we have the power manager and we have a powered object. Let's open that up really quick in Visual Studio. All right, so that's our basic abstract class that we're gonna to wanna to inherit from to make sure we get in messages of on power outage. And we're going to want this to occur on our, let's go to lights out head and our lights out head script, which is right here. Now, currently this is inheriting from mono behavior. So there's really no problem in making this inherit from this one as well. Let's do that. Power manager, I didn't want power manager, I wanna put powered, there we are. So lights out head is now going to inherit from powered and it's going to hopefully yell at us saying we need to implement something. Yes, we do. So let's go ahead and implement the abstract class. Scroll on down to the end where hopefully it was added and there we are. So when this occurs, we're gonna to wanna to throw our coroutine. Oh, you're giving me crap. Random is not ambiguous reference between unity engine dot random and system dot random. So let's do unity engine dot random. Getting any more of that? Doesn't look like it. All right, so names, so we had a namespace clash there. And we are, so start happens, that's all good. Oh, so we don't want this coroutine to occur now. We're gonna delay this until we get a power out message, which is right here. Save that, and that should work just fine. So that's, now hooked up to power outage. Now we do have to turn off the other systems and at the moment I can't recall if the other systems turn off. So we're gonna delay this for a second. I just don't remember if the animatronics still move around even though power is out. I can't remember with those you know, 67 videos I've released on this series what I did several months ago. So we need to wait to queue death until we don't want to queue death when the power outage occurs. So we need to make sure that doesn't happen. And really it should not be death. Instead, it should be a transition into the main menu screen. Okay. So let's handle those. So wait to queue on death until it ends. So death is going to be on, so here's our game manager. So let's take a look at that script and see what I did. So there's the game manager. Game over is here, it's a bool. Does it have an interface or anything that it declares that other people need to implement? So here's the AI manager. Here's if game time is greater than or equal to level duration, do this stuff. 
So do we not game over when the power goes out? I guess I didn't add that to the game. Let me just check again. Here's our power manager. Do we uh, grab an instance of our game manager and do anything with it? No, no. Here's the power. Ah, that's where we call it. So game manager dot instance dot game over is equal to true. We are going to want to halt that from occurring. Actually, I do that for I do that multiple times. I only need to call this once. So let's put that out of the loop because I don't need to call that method or I don't need to set that true every time in that inner loop. Then the power manager turns itself off. All right, this gets called. This shouldn't happen. And what we want to do is uh, when, let's see. So I'm, I'm considering making the game manager contain the code that will move us to the other scene. You know what, let's not focus on that right now. Let's put it in here. It might become a little bit clunky to call have this end our game, but it's where it kind of belongs. So start, start, power out sequence, light show, final light blink. So at the end of the final light blink script is where right here end the game, everything goes go, uh, dark. So we're going to need to use the scene manager. And with the latest version of Unity, I believe it's what like Unity engine dot scene management is what we want to include. And uh, I might get this slightly wrong because it's I've, it's been a little bit since the new changes to the game. So let's do scene manager dot set scene set active scene, and we need to specify the scene. So we have the scene set the scene to be active. So I need to query or get a scene. So let's do scene manager dot get scene get scene by name. Let's do that. And what is the name of our scene? Yes, you need a string. I understand. There you are. And let's go to File and Build Settings. And we have 00, zero underscore main menu. Okay, 00, zero underscore main menu. We're not going to worry about uh, asynchronous scene loading at the moment. We're just going to go with this uh, and hope things work at this time. And I'm going to put a note in the game manager to myself saying slash, uh, notes. When power goes out, the scene transitions are controlled by the lights out head script, not the game manager. Great. That should wait to queue until death occurs. And no death should actually occur. We're going back to the main title screen. I think that's it. So we need to try this out. And unfortunately, I do not have my vibe set up. So I'm going to take a brief jump cut, whoops, and set that up. And we'll come back here and see how it worked. Well, I believe I made a few mistakes before uh, I jump into the Vive. I just realized I don't have the room light. I only have the headlight and the moonlight. So let's add a new light that we're going to control so that when power goes out, we'll turn that one off as well. So light, room light, public and room light, and in here, let's, in case we do anything, let's set that to be enabled, just in case. And down here, as soon as the power out sequence begins, let's go ahead and set this to be false. Or we could set the intensity to zero, it's up to you. Um, we might even want to ramp that down at that point. It's, you know, I'm just gonna turn it off for now. Close that, hit save. So let's go to game, maximize on play, scene, and let's see if this works. All right, I'm in the play space. I am not where I should be, am I? Oh boy, the controllers are all backwards. And, well, the light turned off, but I do not see the head. Oh, there it is. Okay, that's the head. So it's flashing, but I don't have the moonlight, or at least it's not bright enough for this scene. That randomization might be a little too rapid. And that's over. So the moonlight should have killed been killed by now and I should have transitioned to the other scene. So did I get any errors? Yes. Scene manager set active scene is a fail. Invalid scene. So the AI is also still running so we're gonna to have to get rid of that obviously. Uh, let's go back to turn this off and close that console. Ah okay I think I'm using the wrong method. Like I said I haven't used the new scene manager very often. So dot um, let's load this scene let's call load scene and that takes an integer or a string there we go oh because I'm set active scene that's probably not what I want to do all right so that loads the scene what I'm reading online is with load scene you actually need to wait till the next frame 
So since we're in a coroutine, that's actually going to be easy for us. We can do a yield return null and do scene manager dot uh, set active scene. Now we can call the scene with the string. And fingers crossed that this is actually going to work. Scene manager dot get scene by name. So let's jump back over here, clear out of that, and try running this again. So if you notice, I'm in completely the wrong place, and I think that has to do with the fact that um, at this time, I'm using an older version of of the VR plugin. So I'm going to have to delete that and bring it in again. Oh, there's the light source. Oh, there we go. Okay. The blue light still isn't notable at all if it's even there. So we're going to have to fix that still. Well, at least the scene loading seemed to have worked because I think we're now back in the main loading area. Yep. Let's stop this and figure out what went wrong with the lighting. Moonlight, where are you? Um, why are you up there? All right, let's bring you where you belong, which is down and in here. So let's grab the moonlight. Let's deactivate this light source so we can actually see what we're dealing with. I like that. That's good enough. Though the light, this light source is probably too strong. And, and all these other light sources, I believe, are still active even though the scene ends. So they're going to need power down sequences as well. Um, but this video is getting a bit long, so we're going to jump and fix all these little errors probably in the next one. Let's just give this one more go ahead really quick and make sure it's working. And actually, let's go to file, uh, open scene as well. Go to the main menu area and fix this directional light so we can actually see what's going on. There we go. All right, perfect. Save that, file, open scene, go back to our building test and let's run it again. I'm literally just holding this with my hand. That's why it's so shaky. Is the fan running? No, oh, well, we're already down in power out mode, aren't we? The power is drained so quickly. Yeah, pulse, 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 pulse. And our light source should flash. Flashing isn't quick enough. In addition, we're going to want to put a pause in there, a wait time with everything off before the next scene gets loaded. So let's go jump into that coroutine again. Uh, not do a yield re return, no, but let's do a yield return new wait for seconds and let's give it i don't know 2.0 seconds something like that and uh i don't need to test that i know that's going to work so with that let's end this video uh we successfully brought this into the other scene yes there are tweaks we need to make but for the most part that was a pretty easy migration from our test scene into this one and uh probably in the next video we're going to deal with a lot of these problems you know i'm going to hold off with destroying the plugin in steam for the moment uh, just because that's a lot of resetting up everything and I'd rather make progress in the game, uh, even if we're not quite looking from the right location. So remember, if you like this content, please like below. It lets me know that you're interested in what I do. And of course, if you want to watch this whole series and see all the future stuff, feel free to subscribe below. And I'll see you all next time. Hope you have a great night. Bye.